positive versus negative utilitarianism with regards to politics. Um, one of my favorite little aphorisms, uh, as far as I know, it's uh, original to me, but um, all that means is that I came up with it originally. I'm sure that other people have come along, along with the same idea. Um, boils down to in some, something of a deliberate exaggeration in order to overemphasize the point. Uh, it's jihad, not sharia. Jihad means I improve myself. Sharia means society or the larger group or the government or whatever you want to say it, uh, whatever you want to call it, improves me. Um, that is pretty much my view of politics and ethics. I think that the only thing that government or society or the larger society can ever really do is limit the amount of damage that can be done to me. I do not believe that any form of government has the capacity to make me happy, to make me a better person, to make society better, um, at least beyond um, certain bare minimums. Uh, furthermore, I don't see um, politics in any other way except for some way of setting the stage for the individual to flourish. The individual must flourish on his or her own uh, efforts, merits, whatever you want to call it. Politics can only sort of facilitate that. It can't bring it about. Um, you can't create a happy people through politics. It doesn't work like that, in my opinion. That's essentially what I'm, what I'm trying to say. Um, the way I would categorize the uh, frustrated idealist that one sees so much on YouTube, um, it's often that the such a person, and they, they can be conservative or liberal, left or right wing, whatever you want to call them, um, it's not so much that they're frustrated over the fact that things have gone from bad to worse. They're frustrated over the fact that things haven't changed. <laughs> they're not frustrated because things are going downhill. They're frustrated because things aren't improving to the extent that they believe they should be improving. It, one simply needs to ask such people, when were things better? So I think that, yes, to a certain extent, politics is indeed a zero-sum game, but politics isn't the entire picture of human condition. There's only certain things that politics can do, and if we expect too much of it, we do get frustrated idealism. Um, I'm not going to say that there aren't French frustrated idealists, but I would say that the French are a lot more, as you say, cynical in their outlook, and thus they're more likely to take what, would, what we would think of as catastrophes in stride. Uh, for example, as I mentioned in the comment section, um, I don't think that 9-11 would have affected the French the same way as it affected the U.S. Um, the French, within living memory, have had some pretty nasty things happen to them, and it didn't really shake up their self-image the way that it might have. It took them a while to get over uh, the Vichy regime, and they're still struggling, I guess, to a certain extent, with the Algerian War of the 1960s, which was much more divisive than the Vietnam War was in the United States. Uh, it almost led to civil war in France. But, by the same token, there's not a sense that if we cut back on some of the liberties in some way in order to increase our security to deal with the next 9-11, we're immediately heading to a, to a uh, Orwellian dictatorship. Uh, it, it really is, as I say, just a difference in emphasis. Uh, but you, uh, you don't have quite so many frustrated idealists as you do in the Anglosphere. Um, the French sort of say, well, that's the way life is. They're f famous for their shrug, you know, what do you expect of this world? Now, of course, the riposte to that is, that's why French politics is uh, corrupt, uh, more corrupt than generally it is in the Anglosphere, but um, uh, that, just as an American might say that violence is the, in the inevitable byproduct of human liberty, the French would say corruption is the inevitable byproduct of democracy, of a system that deliberately encourages people to engage in slightly disgusting political horse trading. Uh, what do you expect? It's all about juggling vested interests. 
That's another thing about uh, about democracy or representative government. Um, it's not necessarily aimed at uh, at making everything fair or making everything right or creating any sort of a utopia. It's there to manage society's inherent problems in the least damaging way. A good example of that, if you ask me, is India. India is not a democracy. It is a deeply divided... Or, sorry, it's not a... a <laughs> it is a democracy, actually. Um, it's not a utopia by any stretch of the imagination. But it is a society that needs to be managed carefully because of the almost mind-boggling number of competing interests in the country. Democracy of the representative kind facilitates this. All of India's different communities, castes, regions, linguistic groups, competing interests can choose their own representative, send them off to Delhi, to the capital, and they negotiate with each other. It's democracy at its most revolting in that they're just blatantly horse trading, uh, blatantly scratching each other's backs and, and switching favors and things like that. But it is a democracy. It's not a utopia, but it is the sort of system that is least likely to cause disruption to Indian society, which is why I think democracy has much deeper roots in India than anyone, even perhaps the Indians, uh, grasp. Again, politics is about limiting the amount of harm that can happen to people. Ethics is completely different. Um, I agree that what you're saying is that what I'm saying sounds like some sort of political version of ethelism. Um, but no, I wouldn't say that. Well, perhaps I would, because what I would say is anti-politicization or anti-politicism is really what I'm up to. I don't, I don't really think that there is any utopia, politically speaking, and ideally the best thing to do is to dismantle politics altogether and make it superfluous. So yes, you could say that that's political antinatalism. Make politicians extinct. It's not going to happen in my lifetime, but in the meantime, society has to be managed. So, given this, given this reality, what's the best we can come up with? And is it legitimate for me to get mad when we don't get the best that's possible in the real world? Or we don't get the best that it should be? That's essentially the difference in emphasis that I refer to. Idealistic democracy can mean many things. And the French definitely idealize la république, their republic. They don't have any illusions at all about their own politicians. You think that Americans dislike their politicians? Ask a French person. They've always had the lowest uh, uh, opinion imaginable of their own politicians from the get-go. Um, but they do see politics as a necessary evil. It's just, it's, it's just, that's the way society is. That's the world we live in. But la république is an ideal in order to, or an, an ideal that enables us to limit the damage that can be done by engaging in this fundamentally repulsive uh, activity, which is politics. It's, as I say, just a distinction of emphasis, but it's an important one. And I'm going to go back to India probably in the future of this series to sort of illustrate that even better. India is an awesome case of idealistic yet realistic democracy. Thank you.